The final farewell for Her Majesty the Queen has only just begun. A sea of people continue to grow outside Buckingham Palace. And we caught up with one woman who was there as a little girl when Queen Elizabeth II first took the throne. Now she's there again to say goodbye. A procession not seen in seven decades begins in the land where Queen Elizabeth felt most at home. Draped in the royal standard of Scotland, her coffin is driven from Balmoral Estate to begin the sombre journey back to London. Following closely behind, the Queen's only daughter, Anne. The hearse passing through some of the stunning Scottish countryside the Queen loved so much a land she said held a special place in her heart. People turned out in towns along the way, mostly standing in silence. Some applauded after their former ruler passed by. In one section, farmers positioned their tractors to form a guard of honour either side of the road. All over the country, everyone's paying respect, don't you? You can just see it every town, city you go to. By the time the procession arrived in Edinburgh, the crowds had swelled to many thousands. These events are the first meticulously planned steps of a farewell that will be seen by millions in the coming days as a much-loved monarch returns slowly to the English capital to be laid to rest. The crowds already turning out here in London are just a fraction of what's to come. It's estimated one million people will file past Her Majesty's coffin while it's lying in state at Westminster. That's five times the number who paid their respects to the Queen Mother. We obviously tried to come down as early as possible to try and beat the crowds, but as you can see, <laughs> there are a lot of people here that have all come down to pay their respects. And... Becky and Sarah are among the tens of thousands flocking to Buckingham Palace daily. What are you going to miss about the Queen the most? I just think knowing that she's there, I think. I feel a bit surreal, actually. It's, um, it's really hit, hit home that the Queen's died. The floral tributes are being laid in nearby Green Park, transforming it into a sea of colour and poignant farewell notes, some from faraway corners of the Commonwealth. Very emotional, to be honest. More emotional than you thought of me? Yeah, 100%, 100%. What do you think she's going to be remembered for? For looking after us. This couple are part of the Pearly Kings and Queens, a charitable movement that earned Jim an MBE and a personal audience with the Queen. I know she's not here, but in our hearts she is, so that's why we come over to pay our respects, basically. Only a very select few have ever seen anything like this before. Well, I remember the day the Queen ascended the throne. I was 11 years old. Wow. I'd taken the exam at school. It was a very cold day. When I came out, my mum met me and told me what had happened. The passing of the crown is such a clash of emotions for the British people, mourning the death of a beloved Queen, but also celebrating a new King. How are you feeling coming here this morning? Um, I came here for Diana's and it's a totally different atmosphere. It's, it, it's almost more of an upbeat atmosphere. I think people are obviously sad, but also not celebratory, but we've got the new king now. These were the cheers for King Charles as he left Clarence House on a short drive down the Mall. They became deafening as his car reached Buckingham Palace. A series of afternoon meetings for the new king included the acting High Commissioner for Australia. I think uh, the, the speeches by the king have been absolutely fantastic. They just seem to strike the right note. There's also gratitude here that such a sad occasion could be the turning point in relations between Princes William and Harry after their surprise joint appearance along with their wives. 
I'm glad that William got Harry there as well, and I think that's really important. It's still their grandmother. Um, I think that's what she would have wanted. Yeah, yeah, she would have wanted that, I think. It's a real surprise, but happy, I think. Yeah. Because there's nothing like a death in the family to bring people together. Do you think this could be the final gift from the Queen, that she can mend this fractured family? Well, I think the, the Queen's left thousands of millions probably of final gifts, really, in the way of memories and things like that, which are so important.